Cheryl. Come aboard. Lovely yes. to meet you. Cheryl, Thank you very much. Nice yes. to meet you. Yes. Okay, if I come on board. Please. Good Welcome. stuff. Okay. So we've been looking forward to your visit. Can you tell us a little bit about yeah. what we can expect? Absolutely. What we tend to do is go around and we'll do a safety check on all of the boats that are partaking in the, um, the ARC. And the idea is that before they start, they're sent um, a list of all the equipment that's required to take part. And it's not too onerous. It's fairly straightforward equipment that most people would carry who are doing some blue water cruising. Um, the idea really is to come around and check that that's all on board. And also, more importantly perhaps, is make sure they're happy with the equipment, they know how to use it, um, where to stow it, and give people the opportunity to ask questions as well. So we don't like to look at it as a sort of pass or fail you know, exam. It's not like that at all. A lot of the guys here, it's their first time crossing. So we're really keen to make sure that they're put at ease and they feel confident with everything that they've got. Well, what um, we tend to do it is a safety check. It will take about 35 to 40 minutes, so it's not too long. And normally I'll try and start on deck. So we'll start by looking at the guard wires and the jack stays and work our way up to the bow and look at things like the navigation lights and then back down into the cockpit area where we'll look at man overboard equipment, for example, and then any equipment you have in the cockpit. Okay, so four red handhelds and we have two of the six yes. required rocket flares and the rest are down below. And then finally, we'll go down below and look at equipment that you may have down below. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Oh, she's beautiful down below, oh. isn't she? Nice and light. Thank you, yeah. We... Great stuff. Well, let's start with the grab bag. I can oh, see you've got okay. that there, Cheryl. So yes. maybe okay. you want to take me... It's grown. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like me at the airport. <laughs> So um, maybe you want to take me through what you've got in okay. there, yeah. I've just added a few high energy snacks and I'll add some granola bars as well. Fantastic. So there's chocolate, oat cakes, beans, and I've used cans with pull tabs so we don't need a tin opener. A tin opener. Great idea. Okay. Yeah, that's a great idea. We have a fairly heavy duty first aid kit. Excellent. Okay, that's great. So Caspi C one, I'm familiar with those. They're used on commercial vessels, so it's got yes. some nice stuff in there for you. Yeah. Yes. And then a fishing kit. Okay. Just a hand line and lure. Uh, and here are the ex the rest of the required flares. Uh, do you know what I'll do, Cheryl? Do if I those? can um, quickly take a note of those. Sure. So we should have four parachute flares in here. I can see you've got two more in there, so that's yeah. lovely. Fantastic. But really, the plan is to never have to use these. Never get in that life raft. Just keep your main ship afloat. Yeah. But good to be prepared. Uh, we have extra little drogues. We have a handheld GPS and Fantastic. batteries. Excellent. Do you have a VHF that you keep in there or you um, bring with you? We have uh, one here that we keep clipped outside Fantastic. that we could grab. Okay, great. And our satellite phone. Oh, you have a handheld satellite yeah. phone? Okay. Yeah. So the VHF. Little tip I, I quite mm -hmm. often um, give to participants is it should you abandon, and like you say, it's the last thing we ever yeah. want to do, but right. should it become necessary, People in that situation rarely behave how they would mm -hmm. now, very, yes. very rarely behave rationally. And you tend to forget things. And the worst feeling in the world is probably to get in the life raft and cut the painter and think, where's the EPUB or where's the sat phone? Right. So there are quite a few things dotted around the boat that if you have time are quite good to put in and I call them last right. minute grabs. Right. And what I often do is make a little list up and put it somewhere prominent. And you guys are obviously quite a small crew, but on boats with larger crews, right. I allocate one person whose job it is to go and get the last minute grabs, look at the list and put them in so they don't have to think. That's a great idea. Yeah. I'm going to do that. There you are. And there might be things like binoculars, for example, even something right. simple like that. So you can see a ship on yes. the horizon, yes. you know. So there's lots of good things on the boat that you could take with you. But this is great. Okay. Whistle and reflecting mirror. Yeah. Waterproof flashlight, um, another multi-tool. More, more crotch straps. More crotch straps, <laughs> more thermal protective aids. 
Fantastic. instructions. Yeah, well, that's quite we, important. You know, when they come to rescue yeah. you, you need to know what they're trying to tell you. Yes, when the plane flies yes. overhead and dips its wings and does things. So that's, that's right. what that's for. Okay, yeah. good point. Yeah. And, yeah, and when you're stressed, you forget what might now seem very Exactly. The next thing, uh, guys, we're looking for is how heavy items are secured down, and batteries are clearly one of the heaviest things on the boat. And we can see that they're nicely tucked in there under wooden boards. Yep, they're not going and they're down. screwed down, and they're not going to shift anywhere. Yep. So that's just great. The other heavy item that we have on board is the stove. Yeah. Okay. So they have little tabs, so we. Maybe tabs. Interestingly, that comes straight out. Ah, the tab's supposed to be in. Okay, so there we go. So that's uh, caught that one. Somebody I know was hit by a tin of beans um, and knocked out. <laughs> so <laughs> something as simple as that, not stowed correctly in heavy weather, and I think they were flying the spinnaker and they broached. And he was at the chart table and a tin of beans flew across from the galley and knocked him clean out, which afterwards was quite funny, but at the time it was, uh, you know, yeah. quite nasty. So it's really looking around your boat and really making sure it's really secure for sea. One important yeah. item is the emergency position indicating radio beacon, a satellite distress signal so called an EPIRB. So let's take a look at this EPIRB. Mm -hmm. So on this one, yep, so press test button and release. Red LED will turn on if self-test OK. It must be working since it interferes with our wireless microphone. And a white strobe flash and buzzer sounds. So that looks fine. Oh, good. Good. Thank you for that. <laughs> okay. I've always been very nervous of trying that, and it's so important to be familiar with this gear before crossing an ocean. Is that a helicopter I hear in the... <laughs> <laughs> That's me running down the pontoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, so Cheryl, the next thing we're looking for is some fire extinguishers. So maybe you could show us where those are. Sure. You okay there? Yeah. Okay. Great, okay. so we got one there. One right by the companionway. That's in the correct pressure zone. These um, multi purpose powder extinguishers, so it's an ABC extinguisher. Right. It's a little tip again, if the boat has been laid up for quite some period of time, oh. is to take them out and do that with them. Over time, the powder compacts down to form a solid. And I was actually on a boat with a fire once, and two of the three didn't work. And it turned out that was the reason. So they hadn't been serviced, but also they'd been not. Yeah, so I didn't know that. So a little tip for everybody, it's worth doing. Good practice just to take them off. Do you have any more? Yes, yeah. Is there one more? Yeah, there's one here. Okay, that's lovely, yeah. that meet our requirements? So that yeah, meets your requirements, but I mean, if you want to show me the others, yeah, that's... We have a yeah. fire blanket in the galley. That's the other thing we need to check. Okay, that's right. in a really sensible place. So we haven't got it. Some people have it behind <laughs> the stove, which <laughs> is, <laughs> you can imagine is a bit of a problem. Yes. That's fine. Thank you for that. Okay. Okay. And then we have another one here. Forward. Okay, fantastic. We've tried to put them in every cabin where way to get out. Absolutely, yes. that's, yeah, it's always have one near point of exit. So although two is a requirement, two yeah. is not many really. Right. So you've, you're great, you've gone more than requirement, which is great. Well, while we're here, sure. I can see that um, you've got the floorboards up here and um, we've got quite a few hull openings or seacocks here. And what we're looking for is that we have some method of blocking those holes. And it's great to see you guys have attached some bungs here, yes. which can go in. Sometimes one of the things we see is that the bung is too big for the hole, um, particularly on seacocks. They miss, people look at the size of the pipe, and actually right. the hole in the seacock is quite often smaller. Small. Yeah. We also have a bag of all different sizes of bungs, Fantastic. loose bungs, and the collision mats that we have accessible so that ah, if cool. we open this and discover it's not the right size, then yeah. we can. Fantastic. Have the others to do it. That's a really great idea because the other thing is if this is underwater, it's quite hard maybe to, you right. know, find this. It could be floating around. Yeah. Just having a bag of bungs that you can take anywhere on the boat yeah. is a great idea. All sizes. Fantastic. And it's good to see you've got a collision mat as well. Yes. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you for that, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have a quick look at the medical kit that you have on board, Cheryl. So maybe you could show okay. me. Okay. Well, basically, 
I use this as my onboard and then put it in the grab bag when we're at sea. Fantastic. Then I do have, at the moment, I'm seeing some bits and pieces. We're almost finished, Cheryl, um, but before we go back into the cockpit, I can see that you've secured the washboard mm -hmm. here, which is fantastic. And that's something we do require people to do, is have um, both the washboards secured in position. So if the weather is quite rough, um, which is unusual for this trip, yes. um, those washboards are nice and secure. You're not likely to lose them overboard. Right. So that's great. Thank you. OK, guys. Well, that's us all done. Hi. Okay, and um, I have to say, really good. We found a few small things as we went around, yeah. and you fixed those pretty much as we've been going through the check. Wonderful. But absolutely superb, so thank you very much oh, well, thank for your you. time this morning. It's really good to have this opportunity to go through things step by step and really look at them. No problem. Good luck and have a great voyage. <laughs>